There's trouble brewing at Smart World Coffee in Morristown, New Jersey. These two women are trying to apply for a job opening in the kitchen. Are you here for coffee? Or... No. Job application? Only to find out it's not open to everyone. I noticed you were signing. Yeah, we're deaf. That's right, they're deaf. And because of that, the manager rejects their application. What he's doing isn't just unfair, it could be illegal. Well, I'm not going to hire a deaf person. I'll just let you know now, so we'll save you some time. I mean, you're deaf. It's going to be really hard for you to work here. It's, it's the kind of thing that usually happens in secret, behind closed doors. But we're putting this discrimination center stage, right out in the open, to answer the question, what would you do? The biased barista and the deaf applicants are all actors. Hannah Warwick and Maya Ariel attend the National Technical Institute for the Deaf in Rochester, New York. With more than 1,500 students, it's the second largest college for the deaf and hard of hearing in the country. The school helped us develop this idea for the scenario. Students there say finding equal opportunity in the workplace is a big challenge. Many times I met some um, really fantastic bosses to have a really um, keen understanding of what it means to be a deaf person and how to work with deaf people. But at the same time, there are others who choose not to understand or open themselves up to that experience. It would be nice for them to think about what, what is it like to be a deaf person? I mean, how would they like to go into a place and want to apply for a job and then be discriminated against just because of who you are? Jerry Buckley is the president of NTID. When the President Bush signed the Americans with Disabilities Act, many of us hoped that would be the last barrier. What we found out, though, is that attitudinal barriers were still there, that we have much work to do to educate people. Back at the coffee shop, our cold-hearted manager is busy building his own barriers. I, I, you know what, fill out the application, but I'm going to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to hire you. But why can she work here? Why? She's deaf. Remember, it's not a question of communicating with customers. This is a kitchen job. You sure you want to work here? Yeah, it's a kitchen job, right? Right. But can you hear me? Um, I can't really hear, but I read lips. You read lips? Yeah. It's easy to read the look on Kristen Golby's face as she watches in growing disbelief. I just don't think this is the right place. Like, if I yell something to the kitchen, you can't hear me. But the manager ignores all those daggers Kristen shoots his way. So I shouldn't even bother with this? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm not going to hire you. <laughs> not going to fill it out? No. Sorry. Sorry. Is this yours, ma'am? The there coffee you know. isn't the only thing steaming as Kristen storms out. The manager, played by both male and female actors, continues serving up the discrimination. We can't hire you. Many customers are right next to the action. Yeah, but if you can't hear me, how are we going to communicate? You can write stuff down, like make a list. Yeah, but what if I need something done right away? But most don't openly object. A few do stand up to the discriminating manager. But the most surprising reactions come from three customers with something in common. They work in recruiting and human resources. Yes. I love human resources. Let me give you a piece of advice. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have done that. I, I want to be honest with her, but you can't say that. You can't handle it like that. She can come after you. You can't discriminate. If only they had stopped right there. These hiring and firing experts would have been heroes, but they didn't. Listen to the rest of our hidden camera recording, and you'll see why we're not showing you their faces. I probably wouldn't have done that. Only because I probably would have taken my location and then would have fired Because when you think about it, everybody has rights to work. So let her fill it out? I just probably would have let her fill it out and you'll write a note on the back of it to yourself that said, hey, not a thing.
That's right, the outrageous advice from Human Resources. Write a note on the back of the application that the deaf girl is not a fit. Now listen carefully to this recruiter. I've been recruiting, you can't handle it like that. She can come after you, you can't discriminate, just accept it and don't call. You can't tell her that. Handicapped Just don't call. As they continue talking to the managers, some might wonder if it's discrimination these employment experts disapprove of, or only open discrimination. So, it's not a problem to not hire her because she's deaf, it's just saying it out loud to her. He did tell the manager that the owner might want to try out the deaf applicant. Still, in the end, it's not a recruiter or someone from Human Resources who takes the strongest stand of all. It's a guy just taking a coffee break. A man who's heard enough. Because you can fill out the application. Feel free to fill it out. I can't stop you from doing that. But I'm just trying to be honest with you. That's absolutely discriminatory. If, if she can't hear me, though, she... I'm really shocked. And if this is the case, I'm not bringing my business back here. I'm telling you. I, I understand. I mean, you, you basically said, I am not hiring a deaf person. <laughs> You're not saying I'm not hiring a person that's not qualified. I'm just trying to be honest with her, sir. I, I can appreciate that, sir, but uh, I don't see how you expect things to change in the country when no one will give anybody a chance. It's an affront. It's an affront to America. Are she you? Can't, she can't hear. Uh, so what? Hannah and Maya catch up with him outside. I really felt so great when you jumped in and tried to help. Thank you so much just for your willingness to do that. You, you shouldn't have to thank him. You wanted to hug him? Yeah. <laughs> what message do you have for people who didn't say anything? What I would say to those people is that if you feel that you want to say something, please say something. They would be giving you a voice. Absolutely. That's right. And so, as they continue their struggle for equality at work, this reminder to all of us in American Sign Language from students at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. What would you do? Next, that's the guy from the Wanted poster. But